So this will be my final intervention for the Food for Earth Day 2021. And while I'm waiting for the last climate shaper to join me on screen, I just wanted to repeat um, how um, amazing and grateful I am for this growing community. We have uh, over 155 uh, climate shapers who graduated from either the in-person or the um, digital bootcamp what we organized together with FAO. And the next dates are actually on our website, so please check it out. And also, if you would like to get to know them a bit better, uh, we actually have a series on our Instagram account where we host uh, our climate shapers to tell their stories, their connection to the food system, and um, how, how they are trying to act towards a more sustainable food future. And now I would like to ask Ebi Famartino to turn on her camera and mic and come on stage with me. Hi, Ebi. Hi, Julia. Thank you. So nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. I know that your team members are unfortunately in other time zones, so we won't have them here live with us. No. Um, but what is more, more important that also, also shows the diversity of your team and you will introduce one of the, the hackathon um, ideas what you developed uh, over the bootcamp last winter. So now, because we are very conscious of time, I would like to hand over the stage to you. Thank you. Great. Oh, so it is an honor to be here today. And I'm going to present an ambitious business solution that promotes sustainability holistically using restaurants as a central point of community connection and action. And Feed for Future is an idea, as Julia mentioned, that was de developed through the Food and Climate Shaper Bootcamp Program, which is a joint program run by the Future Food Institute and the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations. And the purpose of our project was to engage people and businesses in the urgent issue of the 2030 agenda. So what I'm presenting today is indeed a product of a globally dispersed team who worked tirelessly over a concentrated 48 hour hackathon period. And I want to um, share my immense gratitude for my amazing teammates, um, Vanshika Bhatia, Ahmed Sanaula and Jessica Rosval. As a team, we have collective experience as chefs, chef owners, project and program managers, and students of sustainable food systems. In addition, we have a range of backgrounds in ec economics, finance, and international studies. And what I'd like to do today is to share our business, uh, share the process we took to arrive at our business proposal, um, present you the business, and also um, open at the end for some feedback because this is a work in progress with a lot of room for development. So during the hackathon, our team tackled the following problem statement. How might we enable chef owners to increase demand for sustainable restaurants while achieving a triple bottom line business? So this targeted question addresses the challenge that restaurants face in balancing environmental sustainability and economic viability. The market for sustainable, viable restaurants has historically been limited to high-end restaurants that reach a narrow range of customers. Yet Restaurants are this magical meeting place where in some countries, consumers are spending the majority of their food dollar out of the home. So how might we create a dynamic solution to inspire restaurants at all price points, serving and employing a wide range of people to act more sustainably in service of the 2030 agenda? We identified three key influencer groups who participate and enable the restaurant industry um, and explored the problems and opportunities of each of these before solidifying our idea. First, we looked at the consumer. We identified a strong consumer market for sustainable restaurants from Gen Y, the so-called life livers, and Gen Z, the self-proclaimed world savers. And statistical evidence indicates that these two generations make up a combined 66% of the current consumer base. And they're willing to invest a majority of their disposable income to support and enjoy sustainable businesses as a way to showcase their values of welfare and wellness and climate awareness. Next, we looked at restaurants. For independent restaurants, there's a steep cliff for sustained success, uh, which is made harder during the pandemic. Tight profit margins, high rates of food waste that limit profits, for most restaurants, especially those at lower uh, meal price points, sustainability is something they see that is a cost they can't afford. 
when in reality, it's an opportunity they can't ignore if they wish to survive and to differentiate. And importantly, restaurants really need to ensure that they can have their sustainability efforts be visible so that they're attracting those customers and they're getting a market payoff for their efforts. Uh, finally, our producers. So we have a dwindling number of farmers who face many challenges to carve out a sustainable livelihood. And we considered what solution might help farmers and suppliers have an income stream through restaurants, a, a diversified income stream. In short, could restaurants be a vehicle for community sustainable development? So we looked across the 17 sustainable development goals to hone in on the most impactful ways that we could imagine the restaurant industry contributing to achieving the 2030 agenda. We envision a future where restaurants are rewarded for reducing community hunger and improving food consumption and production habits, where restaurants build sustainable urban and rural communities through their sourcing investments and their employee education efforts. And we want all of these efforts to be visible to a sustainable customer base to incentivize and incite social change. With that, we envisioned Feed for Future. Feed for Future is inspired by the LEED certification for green building design. Feed for Future stands for Food, Environment, Education, and Development for the Future. It's a sustainable restaurant certification and marketplace with a TripAdvisor-like restaurant guide that's accessible to the public. Independent restaurants become certified by Feed, recognized on a map, and connected to suppliers and consumers, helping them become more profitable and sustainable. While the business addresses uh, has benefits for all three influencer groups, I'm going to walk you through how it will work through the eyes of a restaurant chef owner to indicate the benefits. So meet Christine. She's the owner of a pho restaurant in Portland, Oregon, where the average meal ticket is 12 US dollars. Christine's been struggling to keep her business going during the pandemic, and she's spending extra time and money purchasing ingredients at retail price due to the unstable global supply chain. One day, Christine encounters a young customer who asks where the chicken on her menu comes from. And when Christine cannot provide a clear local source, the customer leaves. Christine realizes that to survive, she needs to update her operation to appeal to this new audience. After a quick Google search, she and her daughter find the Feed for Future certification. On the Feed for Future certification page, Christine answers intake questions related to the four key SDG areas. She receives a level one feed rating and also a report with her strengths and opportunities. While Christine sources many ingredients from overseas, which created a lower score in the food indicator area due to volatile supply chains, she earned points um, in the environment indicator area by using compostable to-go containers. She also donates her end of day product to a local shelter that serves people experiencing food insecurity, which earned her points in the development area. Shortly after reviewing the report, Christine receives a message that she's paired with a level four feed chef owner as an ambassador to help Christine connect to local suppliers and increase her rating in the food area. The ambassador introduces Christine to John who runs a local chicken farm called Marion Acres. As a feed level three certified supplier, John is trying to increase his food indicator rating by reducing production waste. He posts pasture raised chicken bones at a discounted price on the feed supplier marketplace, and Christine decides to buy them for her pho broth since the discounted price meets her budget. When the sales finalize, they both receive an increase in their overall feed rating. Christine promotes John's farm on her feed profile and on her menu. Finally, let's meet the consumer. Abdul is a sustainably minded Gen Z who signed up on the Feed for Future platform as a user aligning with SDG 11. Abdul receives a push notification about Christine's new local supplier relationship and decides to visit her restaurant for the first time for lunch. Abdul posts about on social media about his meal and posts like this help increase Christine's sales over time, allowing the family business to become more profitable. She starts an employee education fund to give back to her hardworking staff, and this earns her a higher education rating on the platform. So, Using We use the prosperity thinking model. You can see the clear value proposition for all three stakeholder groups from the Feed for Future concept. For the chef owner, they can differentiate and attract new customers, meet new local suppliers to shorten their supply chain. Uh, for the farmer, they have new market exposure and a marketplace for selling surplus and reducing their waste. For consumers, they receive more transparent information about re local restaurants, and they have a reliable guide for sustainable eating while traveling that appeals to their value set. 
we have a lot more research and development to do, um, but thus far we've received strong validation from all three stakeholder groups that it would be something they would use to benefit their businesses or their personal lifestyle. The fact that we're looking at sustainability holistically beyond better sourcing or better packaging is a clear win. Uh, the platform offers equitable access uh, for restaurants at any scale to become uh, more sustainable and economically viable. We as a food Feed for Future team, quite honestly, have been very busy <laughs> with our independent businesses, our jobs and schooling. And as a result, we have a very slow plan to develop this idea over the next two years. Uh, we've considered ways to ensure that the platform can remain free to all consumers so that it's accessible through a small subscription from certified restaurants and suppliers, in addition to potential partner partnership opportunities uh, for sponsorship. And an idea like this really can't happen without relationships and partnerships. And in fact, we realized that we can't accomplish this idea without collaboration and some honing on the development concept. So we're seeking support uh, to realize this vision. If you're interested or have ideas about possible partnerships, we would love to hear from you. I've listed my email here. I'll also put that in the chat. And we um, will also send out a survey just to gather some general information from you that I'll also place in the chat here, as well as um, post on social media. So in closing, here's my final thought for you. This Feed for Future business concept is ultimately a community action movement with restaurants at the center. The idea presents a way to ignite sustainable change with the potential to support the triple bottom line for businesses, as well as the 2030 agenda. It's a pro-sustainability food movement that can spread far and wide in service of resilient communities and restaurants. Thank you for your time. Evie, thank you so much. It was so nice to hear um, about the project again in uh, such a concise way. In the meanwhile, I shared the link to the survey on all of the thank channels you. where we broadcast. So please everyone, at least take the first step and support the project by filling out the survey what the team put together. And if anyone else has um, other ways of contributing, you have Abby's uh, availability, or you can also reach out through Future Food and we will make sure that you are connected. So Abby, I wanted to thank you again to represent Feed for Future um, on today's Food for Earth session. And now I will hand over uh, the virtual torch um, to San Francisco. So Abby was dialing in from Portland and now we are moving to San Francisco, handing over to one of our great ambassadors and future food family members, Tim West and his guests. <laughs>